What is going on guys? Hopefully you guys are doing well and having a good start to your week. My name is Joe if you're unfamiliar with the channel. Um, thank you for clicking on the video. If you're a returning subscriber, I do appreciate it. Um, and today's video, as you see by the title, it's going to be continuing with the series um, that I started yesterday. If you didn't see that video, go check it out. kind of explains what the series is going to be involved with. Um, but as you can see by the title, you can probably get an idea either way. Um, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, a few different things here. So I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about a quick shoulder warm up that I like to do before um, my upper body days, whether that's a back day, push day, um, or even just like an arm day itself. Um, just a quick shoulder warm up. I'm going to show you guys that, explain through it a little bit. And then I'm going to be talking to you guys about a pull workout, so a back workout that I did the other day. Um, actually, it was about a week ago um, now. So going to go over that like I did in the last video, kind of talk about the movements I did and the rep ranges I did, and um, just some things that are going on in my mind when I'm going through those different exercises. Um, and then I'm going to finish the video with some questions that I actually got on the last video. So thank you to all of you who asked me questions. I do appreciate it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in this video as well. I will be answering them all. And um, that's kind of what this series is going to be about. So um, the questions I'm going to be answering today are kind of about protein intake, how much protein to be getting throughout the day, what I would recommend if you're trying to put on muscle, and then also what I would recommend um, as far as uh, kind of what I do in my own opinion and what I do to get in my protein um, the necessary amount um, every single day. So that was kind of the questions I got asked. That's kind of what I'm going to talk about um, a little bit today. Um, and also just talk about a little bit what kind of like a normal day of eating for me would be like, which kind of relates um, to the protein intake question. So getting right into it guys, like I said, I'm going to talk about shoulder warm up um, and specifically shoulder warm up here um, without any equipment. So this is a warm up that you guys can be doing at your house. Um, whether you're going to do a workout at home, whether you're going to do it at the gym, you don't need anything for it because I know a lot of times gyms either don't have bands or it's just, it, sometimes it's just a hassle to warm up. So a lot of times people neglect it. Um, and that's when injuries start to happen or you start to have kind of those achy um, and squeaky quote unquote um, joints. So um, we want to make sure we're always staying mobile, staying in through each range of motion um, and also just like I said getting blood flow um, and warming up properly. So it doesn't take much. Um, I'm going to kind of start the video here guys and you'll see that I'm just doing some arm circles to start out. So I like to start out with smaller diameter, so really small circles with my hands and then I'm kind of working my way gradually to a bigger arm circle. I'm going to do this for about 10 to 15 seconds and then I'll switch it to a backwards arm circle. So just warming up those shoulders and that's pretty much um, all that's going on there. So nothing really crazy, just kind of getting, like I said, blood flow there. Um, I'll also shake out my arms a little bit, kind of just let those shoulder blades come together and back as you're seeing. Um, and that's really, like I said, something I'll do for about 10 to 15 seconds um, on each of those. After that, I move into what I call cat cows. Um, it's essentially what it looks like. You're doing like kind of a cat motion where you're retracting your shoulder blades down, bringing your head up, and then you're bringing that down um, and reaching that upper back up um, and kind of seeing basically how far you can reach the upper back up comfortably and stretch out that upper back while digging your chin down into that neck to stretch out, um, or excuse me, down into that collarbone right here um, as far down as you can to really stretch out that neck. So this is great. I like to do this if I have tension headaches a lot. Um, and like I said, just to get kind of that warm, um, that upper back warm and ready to go. So the last thing I'll do is kind of, I believe it's called uh, like uh, threading the needle. I've heard it called a lot of times um, and other different things like that. But you're essentially on all fours and you're reaching through threading the needle and then opening up through your chest and looking up towards your hand as you're doing that. So it's a great way to warm up the chest and also kind of move through that thoracic spine a little bit and get a little rotation through there because um, a lot of times from sitting we get a little tight there. So that's something else I like to do. Um, and like I said, I'll do that. Um, for about five to six reps per side or for about 10 to 15 seconds. Um, there's really not a wrong number for these. Some days I'll do more than others if I'm feeling a little bit more beat up and some days I'll do a little bit less if I'm feeling a little better. But I always do this sometime, uh, something like this on um, pretty much every single day um, that I'm at the gym because mobility is key, staying fresh, staying healthy is the name of the game because if you're going to be in this for the long haul, you got to take care of yourself. So um, moving on guys. I want to go into the workout here. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but the first movement in this pull day um, was actually some pull ups. So I was able to um, work on a straight bar, which I don't get to do very often. So I ended up using a 40 pound kettlebell and I did sets of six reps, I believe. I was shooting for six to eight, but didn't do so great that day. And I kind of uh, was feeling the 
feeling the failure coming on a little bit stronger than I normally would. Um, I've done 40s for about eight reps before, um, but like I said, I wasn't feeling the greatest this day, so I kind of kept the reps um, at about six um, and kept my form solid there. So that's something I'll always recommend if you're doing something in the gym where you're feeling like, hey, I've done this before, but you're maybe not feeling the best that day. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not making progress. Um, everyone has good and bad days. There's so many variables when it comes to sleep, um, what you ate before the workout, if you were able to, um, uh, like I said, if you're, if you're in a fight with your um, family or if you're like having stress in your life, that's going to affect your workout, guys. So not every day is going to be the best one. Um, so kind of listen to your body and don't be afraid to make tweaks. Um, like I said, it's not necessarily that you're not making progress. So Moving on from that, I ended up doing, like I said, three sets of about six reps with um, some added weight. You can also do body weight or assisted pull-ups if you're looking to do this workout. So moving on, I moved to a hammer strength low row. So this is something I really like to do either one-handed, um, one arm at a time, or both arms at the same time since it's a unilateral movement, um, meaning each arm and each side of your body is working independent of one another. So this is a great movement to kind of avoid imbalances um, and also work on, uh, like I said, just a unilateral style movement. Um, but I specifically like the low row, or you maybe have heard it called the Dorian Yates row. Um, it's very similar to that, the hammer strength that, um, that is. So I really enjoy doing this to hit the middle and lower lats. Um, I just really enjoy how the squeeze feels um, and just how the stretch feels um, once you get that seat positioned correctly. So I did three sets of 10 to 12 reps on this and then I moved on to, I believe, yep, a neutral grip lat pull down. So the lat pull down here, I did a neutral grip since I did the straight bar um, during the other portion um, of, of my uh, vertical pull for the day, which was pull ups. So I usually like to include at least one vertical pull and at least one horizontal pull and then usually I'll switch it back and forth so then I'll do um, whatever I did first, I'll go back to that after I did the horizontal so I'll usually do vertical pull, horizontal row and then I'll do a vertical pull again and a horizontal row again um, and that's usually pretty much um, my back day. So um, after I did this for three sets of 10 to 12 as well, I then moved on um, to a one arm row, so another horizontal row, but I did a unilateral variation um, on the cable machine. So I really like incorporating this a little bit because it kind of gets that core involved a little bit being that you're standing and you're kind of forced to stabilize yourself through that foundation. So same thing here, I believe I did 10 to 12 reps for three sets on each side of my arms. And then I finished up with just some curls. So I did a rope hammer curl. Um, to hit a little bit more of the outer head of the bicep and the forearm a little bit and then I switch um, right into a straight bar curl. So for those I believe I did three sets of about 10 reps as well. Um, so kind of kept everything in the specific um, about 10 to 12 rep range there um, except for the first, first movements um, where I was a little bit lower in the rep range. So back days tend to be a little bit quicker for me. I'm usually in and out at about 30-45 minutes and Honestly, my workouts lately haven't been over an hour and that's kind of just to keep the efficiency going, um, make sure I'm intense in, in the workout itself and not going too overboard with talking or um, getting distracted in the gym um, and really just not wasting time. So one more thing before we get to the end of this video, I don't want to make this video too long, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what I would recommend as far as protein intake. So if you're new, not new to the channel, um, you've probably heard me recommend this before but that's okay um, because we need to hear, hear things um, at least a couple times before they kind of get ingrained in our brain but shooting for about 0.8 to a gram of protein per pound of body mass is kind of what you're going to want to shoot for so i'm about 150 155 pounds so i shoot for about 150 to about 155 160 grams of protein every day so the reason being here that might seem like a lot is that's going to actually help you with your recovery protein is going to be essential and recovering is going to be essential to building muscle the workouts themselves are not doing anything but kind of breaking that muscle down in order to rebuild and rebuild stronger and bigger we need to make sure that our recovery is optimal so protein is a huge factor in that keeping that protein synthesis which is the muscle building process going um, but also sleep water intake like i said keeping stress low um, all these are factors um, but the biggest ones you guys kind of want to focus on are making sure your diet's on point making sure you're getting enough sleep and then just making sure your workouts aren't too overbearing where you're getting too burnt out where you're feeling like you're not wanting to train the next day um, that's going to be key so like i said with the protein about 0.8 to a gram of protein per pound of body weight 
Um, and this is taking into consideration that you're not someone who has a ton of fat to lose um, because that will kind of throw things off a little bit. You probably don't need as much protein. You probably don't need your actual body weight if you're someone, like I said, who has a little bit more body fat to lose. So that's what I would recommend. Um, as far as things that I use to get in my protein, I don't do anything too fancy. The main thing that I'll focus on just because I'm a busier kind of guy is using a mass gainer. I'm a leaner guy as I mentioned, so mass gainers are something that I would recommend you use, but they can be expensive. So a lot of you guys are younger and I'm myself included, um, you can kind of hit, uh, take, a, take a beating in the pocketbook if you're always relying on mass gainers. So things that you can do at home that are basically an at home style mass gainer, um, you can blend up a bunch of different food, throw in protein powder, um, throw in some veggies, throw in a, and just kale, you won't taste it I promise, throw in a little bit of like strawberries, berries, um, like I said, protein powder, um, and then you can put in things like maltodextrin, which will give you a little bit of carbohydrates. Um, you can throw things in like oats, which will also give you a little bit of carbohydrates. Um, I've heard people even putting egg whites in there for a little bit more protein. Um, but there's ways to get protein in, even if you're someone who's busy and you have a lot going on um, that doesn't allow you to kind of eat regularly. So um, being able to get in your protein throughout the day doesn't necessarily need to be in a specific number of meals but rather you need to do it um, just throughout the day. So if it takes you six meals to get your protein in and that's what your schedule allows you to do and that's what your kind of hunger levels allow you to do, then do it. But if you're someone who can eat bigger meals and get away with it, then that's okay too. It just kind of all depends upon what kind of person you are um, as far as your appetite, if you're a big eater, smaller eater, and then also if you're just a busy person. If you're at work all day, it's going to be a lot more difficult than someone who has a job at home where they can eat consistently. So um, that's kind of what I would recommend as far as that. Um, otherwise, guys, protein is pretty, pretty easily available. I mean, you can go to the store and get chicken breast for pretty cheap. And I mean, four ounces of chicken breast is 25 grams of protein. So if you're a leaner guy like myself, getting in 150 grams of protein, once you kind of get into the rhythm of things, isn't necessarily that bad. So let's say you have um, you have a shake in the morning, like I said, with all that, that fruit, veggies to start your day, that's about 50 grams right there because you put two scoops of protein in there. And I'm just talking about 100% whey protein um, or you, you add egg white. So let's say you get 50 grams right there. Then you have um, eight ounces of chicken for lunch. That's 50 grams of protein right there. And then you have, let's say, another another protein-packed dinner with lean produce, um, or excuse me, lean meat and produce, veggies, that sort of stuff for dinner. You're going to be right around your goal already without even really getting into um, kind of a, a hard uh, gainer sort of mindset where you're feeling super full because eating that clean um, will allow you some room, especially if you have room in your carbohydrates. You can eat the things you like to eat. Don't be afraid to eat some rice. Don't be afraid to eat some oats in the morning. Don't be afraid to have some fruit. Um, don't be afraid of fruit of foods, guys. I mean, you want to eat healthy. You want to keep it about 80, 20, or about 90, 10 as best you can as far as 90% or 80% of your foods being nutritional, whole foods. Um, but don't be afraid to kind of have balance. Um, mindset is key, guys. Adherence is key. Sustainability is key. You got to think long term with this. So if you're feeling like you're beat up and you really are just like, oh, I really got to eat this, uh, whatever. I, I really want my burger. Um, then, then eat it. I mean, budget it in your calories for the day and move on with your life. Don't let it keep your mind wrapped up on that and allow you to kind of get off track because you're so focused and hyper-focused on something that really um, can be can be kind of worked around and eaten and just moved on from and budgeted in with your day. So I kind of went off on a tangent there and I'm kind of rambling, but hopefully this helps you guys out. Hopefully you can take away something from this and this is a little longer than I wanted to go, but um, like I said, hopefully you guys are still watching, but I'll talk to you guys very soon. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. It looks like you guys are, but make sure you guys enjoy, or excuse me, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Make sure you guys like the video. If you are enjoying it, share it, um, do anything to help me out. I really appreciate it. But like I said, guys, your comments mean the world. That's kind of what's going to help this series keep going. Um, so if you have any questions, um, leave them below. Or if you guys want to DM me on Instagram, I'll put up my Instagram right here. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Going to put out at least one more of these this week um, and just keep them going as consistently as I can. So talk to you guys soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. You already know.